Okay, we're back in the building with another one, and I'm super excited because we're going to get to the secret sauce about Tesla. Everyone hates Tesla. Let's get active. Let's get into the video and hear about the secret sauce. I want to know. I must know. I got to know what's the secret sauce. And yeah. When I was interviewing, they're like, you know, we're going to need your help in a lot of stuff. You know, I had a director background previously at a distributor, distrib distribution company. I'm like, yeah, whatever. A huge fan of the company. I had a Model S at the time. I'm, like, I'm going to come in and kick ass because I'm passionate about this company. I want to get stuff done. Okay. I walk in. Computer doesn't work. My login didn't work for like two days. Right. So I brought an extra computer having heard stories that, hey, your login might not work. Oh, my gosh. Bad start for Tesla. Right. Somebody's in the comment section like, yes. They're failing. I knew that they sucked. Okay, now he's talking about when he used to work at Tesla a long time ago. But net net at the end of the day, he's going to show you something about the culture, right? And about something that's, a, I think it's a fundamental principle about Tesla and how it becomes so successful is the foundation of the people that are there. We always talk about the Elon Musk's. We always talk about me, O2O. But let's talk about the employees. The employees are better than ever. It's the best employees. You know, it's the only company I like actually owning because I know the employees that work there actually care and want to work there and go above and beyond. Unlike other places where they're asking for work life balance and, you know, wine on tap and all these other type of exotic extreme things. But net net, I know people at Tesla are kicking at and taking aim. And that's what I used to do in the Marine Corps. So Ura, simplified Dell, it's always safe. Though. Let's continue. And then once I bring my computer, I'm like, okay, well, this is probably going to be useless, but whatever. I'll bring it in just to show that I'm freaking motivated. I'm ready to go. So I walk in and, uh, you know, I meet my manager and my manager is like, hey, you know, nice to see you again, Farzad. You know, if you don't remember me, I'm Greg. Nice to meet you. Uh, Greg German, still a very good friend of mine. Just one of the, just a killer. One of the most talented people I've truly ever met. And he's like, okay, cool. Uh, let's do a five minute tour real quick. Okay, great. All right, so uh, our outbound lot's broken, our inbound lot is broken, our uh, inventory control is terrible, we can't get product out fast enough, we have a 10-day backlog, uh, how can you help us? And I'm like, what the f- How am I supposed to do this without a computer? <laughs> you know? But then, and then that first day was from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. So everything's messed up, how can you help us? Hmm, very interesting, right? Like, let's get into the fire, solve a problem. How could you solve this? What do you think? Wow. Name a job that's like that, guys. Nothing. PM. You know, I was just taking everything in. And then I went home. I remember going home and I'm like uh, to my to my wife. I'm like, I, I don't understand how this company is like afloat, you know, because there's just so much chaos and everything feels so urgent. It feels like everything was like put together with like Band-Aids. And we, we were given rocks and, 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 and sticks to make a spaceship. But I yeah. think that sort of formula is the magic behind Tesla because it, or it, it forced you to figure out how to do a lot with a little. And my, my whole, the biggest thing that I learned was. So doing a lot with a little, that sounds like good overhead to me, right? We're doing a lot, massive amounts of productivity with a little. Right. And little expense, a little cost on goods and services. So that sounds like a pretty good formula for me. But I'm allowing him to continue. Because if you combine, if you're a magnet for top tier talent and you give them that environment and you give them the keys, they will figure it out. Right. That's Elon. Elon is the magnet for top talent. That is true, man. People are looking for a leader. And as much as you might not see him as your political journalist leader and all this freedom of speech and your patriotic whatever engineers see that man as a leader in a beacon of hope in a world lost against you know all odds and don't really focus on engineering doesn't even care about stem the only stem that they care about is lighting up a blunt but at the end of the day he is a beacon for the engineers and people go there because they know i'm going to be able to do rad stuff over there does that resonate with you at all? Because that, that was my biggest takeaway from my experience there. I don't know if that resonates with you at all. I'm sure it does. In some yeah, way. yeah, if, it definitely does. I mean, th th like fast forward a week, one week after that, I, um, I'm being picked up in Nevada by um, one of the people at the Gigafactory who ended up uh, working my team later. And uh, another story time. Let's get it. Um, he's, he's like, ah, oh, where are you staying? Uh, the La Quinta. Um, it's like, well, wait, what, why are you staying in the La Quinta? I said, well, I don't know. Like my boss at the time said, 
we stay at places that your door should be going to the outside. It should not be inside of a hotel, yeah. basically a motel. So I'm staying at the La Quinta. The next day, I, we drive over to Fremont and we're washing cars. And it just, you know, just a, it's just a, it just goes to show you, right? Like to your point, you're pretty. To your point, you're pretty much in the trenches doing whatever that's needed to be done, right? Washing cars, right? That's very interesting. Let's get it. Trying everything, doing anything, uh, figuring out everything. And, and once you show some level of accomplishment, the sky's the limit. Um, then all of a sudden, and sometimes this can get a company in trouble and it, and it got me in trouble at times too. It's like, oh, you may have done a good job over here. Let's try to see if that translates, see if we can put you in crazy positions, see if we can ask you to do more than, uh, than, than maybe what your background suggests you could do. So yeah, anyways, that, that, uh, that definitely was the case for me too. It's, it seems like such an interesting case study for how to more than what your background says you can do. See if you can get tossed in the fire and then learn as you go. See if you could develop more skills. I mean, most Normans are going to complain about it. That's why Tesla is not the place for you. And please don't sign up and please don't apply. Only the top 10th, the top talent teeth. Y'all guys go in and put in your application, please. Run startup cultures at scale. You know, I think you and I pre- talked about this very briefly. Uh, uh, when we met last, but it's like the one thing that I've I, I've taken away is you know when I look around at other businesses or I look around you know just any entity right and I'm like and I and I take the time that I had a Tesla and I'm like okay if a company that's a hundred thousand people plus can operate like this what is the limiting factor from every other company or every other company of that size operating like that right and so in my head it's like it's got to be culture it has to be some sort of leader that's up front that's you know leading the charge and saying this is how we're gonna do it right. But like, how, how do you, what what do you think that formula is? Like, I agree. Definitely the leader, but let's continue. You know, I think I remember your answer from last time, but I would love to sort of hear your take, you know, so the audience can hear it too. Cause I think, I think that is like so profound and it's, it would make the world such a better place if every industry borrowed a lot of that type of sort of execution. Like if we, if we look at what Elon did with X as an example, right? 80% less people. The platform still works, right? Uh, SpaceX is way leaner there than than Boeing, and they're doing a lot more than Boeing, especially in relation to the, the NASA sort of uh, partnerships that they had, right? Tesla versus other EV makers, you know, outside of the Chinese players who are super competitive, there is like a there's there's that secret sauce. Can you can you maybe help verbalize that? Like, what do you think? Yeah, please verbalize the secret sauce, not a one. That is, you know, there's a lot of reasons why Elon is amazing, a lot, but I think organizationally that it's probably more the case than anywhere else. And and part of that is because he has the ability to take in lots of different types of information across lots of different inputs and sectors and synthesize it in a way that I don't think many people can do. But I think the thing that's um, incredibly important is taking the engineering side and transferring that into other places as well. Getting rid of the parts that don't make any sense and simplifying and simplifying and simplifying until you've simplified too much cutting until you've cut too much. Um, Those are things that he takes to lots of different business thought processes, not just engineering a car or engineering a rocket ship. And that, that I think that mindset is really important because uh, all too often we're building and that's his first principle mindset. Like this is nothing, you know, uh, new for any of your listeners, but that taking a mindset to all different types of things, including government issues and policy issues, and be, being willing to dive super deep with people in the government that actually understand these things or in the site selection process or in a business development partnership to dive all the way down to the very bottom rung of the building block and then building back up. But I think the other piece is... So building from the ground up, right? Like going through everything, the SOP, right? The standard operational procedures. And even beyond that, if you have to, down to the directives that are created from into the SOP. So it's very essential to div, dive real deep and then actually make the cuts, make the edits, make the revisions on the things that don't make sense and clip that out. That's called efficiency, sometimes even cutting too much. But if you cut too much, then you could add the little small layers back on to the actual process, you know, add some more steps to the things that you oversimplified. Putting crazy amounts of pressure, good pressure, I think fun pressure, um, on every single team, you know, at the time, if you ask me, was it fun, fun pressure, pressure. 
you know, sometimes, you know, getting the, getting the, that term. <laughs> getting the nasty grams, uh, you know, at late hours of the night, not always the most fun, but, um, uh, looking back at it, I think we can, we can laugh about it and have fun. With Only it. the survivor. And see, that's just a lesson that I always teach over here on obstacles the opportunity. It's really not about the actual end goal. It's actually the goal is good for the soul. And so it's the process and the journey, guys. And so these guys look back and during the process, there were some ups and downs, just like life is ups and downs. But at the end, when you actually reflect back onto the past and you look on the journey, you'll say, wow, it was really worth it. And actually, I'll give you an extra gem so you guys can understand this. Even when they reflect back on that journey and they're laughing and you're like, oh, I could never do that. That's why you could never be those people. Because in the journey also, you created a stronger you. It's called self-development. And self-development and growth is essential to evolution and adaptability. And so these guys, they go on, that diaspora that we spoke about of Tesla, go on to replicate other entities that are also successful in their own right. Because during the time that they had to deal with pressures, ups and downs, nasty grams, you know, washing cars, even though they might have been a software engineer, at the end of the day, it developed their character. The journey was rough. But again, the goal was reached, but the goal was not even about the production of the cars at the end of the day for each individual person. It was also about the actual personal development and the soul. Goals are not only good for the achievements, but they're also good for the soul. Goals for the soul. That's what we'll have to end it out. Like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you guys can get this information. And hopefully you guys can work for cutting edge companies. I didn't work for Tesla, but I did work for the Marine Corps. The Marine Corps may be the man I am to today. And I would never look back when all the hazing, all the discrimination, oh my gosh. <laughs> And all the pain and suffering and the sacrifice I made. But it was all worth it for the guy, for the man, for the human, the human being, and the human doing that I am today. Everyone hates Tesla. It's electric. Boogie, boogie, boogie. You can't control.